anything, but it's uh, great to be here and to address this whole topic of shamanism. We had a little walk around Avakik this afternoon, uh, which was lovely. But it's interesting how the, this shamanism, how it's just growing again throughout the United Kingdom. And uh, many people are turning to these earth-based religions, these natural religions, if you, if, if you can call it that. But one of the most common shamans who you probably all know and recognize would be Geronimo. And Geronimo the Apache, you know, claimed to be a shaman, a seer, someone who could see into the future. And of course he was also a warrior. Interestingly, isn't it, Geronimo at one point did become a Christian, um, but was put out of the reformed Dutch church for gambling. <laughs> so, you know, how deep his convictions went, I, I don't know. But, um, you know, from the history books, he was telling the Christians that Jesus was the way to heaven. And then when he would speak to his tribe, he was encouraging them to follow the traditional um, Native American religion. So he kind of blends the two together. But anyway, shamanism is an earth-based religion. The shaman would, uh, will enter into altered states of consciousness and he or she is, is, is kind of part sorcerer, part magician, part prophet, part seer, part healer, who can enter into these trances to discover guidance and to get direction for the entire tribe. They seek to be led by different spirits to benefit their communities, being instructed uh, by departed ancestors and their various gods. For example, the Native American shaman, say from Southwest America, would traditionally seek to be guided by a spirit of maize, by the spirit of the rainbow, by the sun, by the thunder, and by powers of nature. You know, sometimes we can be actually out walking, and we can meet somebody, and we start talking to them, and we can say, well, what are you doing? And they'll say, well, I'm on a visionary quest. I'm trying to tune in with, with nature to get some guidance. The Native American uh, shaman uh, would also have been known as the medicine man. He would have been regarded as a holy man as the shaman would have been chosen by the spirit. The plain tribes, Indians of North America, they'd send a boy out, aged 11 or 12, send him out into the wilderness for three or four days to seek a spirit protector. He would travel far without seeking food or water, but he would be praying and praying to the spirits for protection. At the end of his quest, he would receive visions. So then that 11, 12 year old boy would go back to his village and share what he had seen. Sometimes, uh, you know, spirit animals would appear to him. Sometimes half human, half animal. Sometimes the, 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 the spirit they would see would be bigger than a man, more powerful than a man. They may even see the spirit of the thunder or the spirit of the maze or a rainbow maiden. You know, but once the spirit experience had passed, they would head back to the commun community and share their experience. And then the community would introduce them, if you like, or promote them into a shamanistic lifestyle. So the shaman there is seeking to help his community after he's had all of these strange experiences with different spirits from his quest. <clears throat> now the shaman has to help the, the, his community and one of the ways he would help would be by healing. And interestingly the shaman holds the five points of healing. Um, so he views sickness in five different ways. 
And they generally believe that they're doing good. They generally believe that they're helping people. The thing is, they've been deceived. They don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. The shaman would believe in soul loss. And soul loss is a belief that a person's soul may leave their body when they're sleeping or when they're suddenly startled. Yeah. You know, the soul may even have been captured by an evil spirit. Until the soul is returned, the person remains ill. And with the Native American <coughs> Indian view of, of shamanism, a person may have more than one soul. And for the Native American Indians, the soul can sometimes live behind the eyes or behind the liver. So it's good to, for you to, I, you know, to look in the scripture and see what you mean by soul, you know, so that you know yourself what the soul is. So what happens is the shaman, he sends out his soul into the spirit realm to find the lost soul. And of course, you can draw some analogies there of how Christ comes to find us. And to save us, the shaman would go into a trance, seek help from the, the animal spirits to find the lost soul and to bring it back to the person and put the soul back in the person. Spirit intrusion, spirit intrusion are spirits that enter into a person that would cause the illness or the insanity whereby then the shaman would come along and he would perform an exorcism. And the way the shaman would do that would be by invoking a more powerful spirit to bring about the healing. Now another interesting one, and I forgot to bring some pictures of this, I was going to do this, but is object intrusion. <clears throat> this can cause illness from the shamanic viewpoint this is when an object is supernaturally placed inside of a person and that causes sickness. Now the shaman seeks the help of spirits where he will suck out the object with the spirit's help. And th that happens very much with the polar shamans, with the Eskimo shamans. And I know pastors in... South Africa, uh, uh, Kwasi Zabantu, that have actually dealt with this where they have prayed with, with women and um, literally a frog, a physical frog, has come out of the mouth. A grasshopper, a spoon, a piece of metal like a pin coming out of the ear. Interestingly that they said when they went to pull the pin out of the ear, the, um, the person started shrieking or screaming, it's hurting, it's hurting. But as the ministers just gathered round and they didn't pull the pin, they just sang hymns to Christ. And the Holy Spirit ministered, the pin just naturally was pushed out. You know, the same happens in Indonesian cultures where the stones have been placed in the arms and the forearms here by the, by the um, shamans and the wish doctors. And when the Christians begin to pray and to sing praises to Christ, the magic stones are pushed out one by one in Jesus' name. Now for some of us it is completely crazy. It, you know, it just goes over our head. But in these tribal cultures, these things actually happen. And it is coming into Wales and across the United Kingdom as people are turning back to these nature religions. So by a person having an object in them, it's going to make them sick. If somebody puts a spoon or a battery into you, you're going to become ill because the body wants to reject it. The fourth way a person from a shaman's point of view becomes ill is because they've broken a taboo. They've offended the gods. Or they've committed incest or some sexual perversion, which can be seen as provoking disease. The shaman uses his power to find out which...